Snake. The war had launched my Metal Gear just impacted on the mainland US. Casualties. None. What? It was a fake. The coordinates were set to an unpopulated area, a nuclear nest testing site in Nevada. What kind of a sick? All the same, there's a huge crater at the site. We need to get a cover story to the press. Metal Gear's existence cannot be made public. That appears to be the CIA's forte. After all. Certainly, but it won't be easy. Constructing a plausible denial for the masses requires preparations. Snake, GLF transmitted a message to the American president just after the impact. I'm sending it to you as well. Hello, Mr. President. Did you like my present? I'm sure you did, after all. It is made in the USA. No doubt you know the gist of my message. Withdraw the UN troops from Gindra immediately and recognize our sovereignty. With US backing, the motion will face no delays at the UN Security Council. You can save face and millions of lives. Voting lives. Not a bad deal, I think. But I'll set a deadline just to save you the procrastinating as well. Three hours. If our demands not met within three hours, a real nuclear warhead will be launched. The target will be, hmm, New York City, or Los Angeles, or perhaps Washington, D.C. We'll see how I feel at the time. I expect glad tidings soon. Well! Of course, the U.S. government will make no concessions. Certainly not. We don't negotiate with terrorists. But we can't get to Metal Gear. He may not look it, but Jimmy did head the unit's development. He may know he may know how to stop the strike. Get him on the codec. Chris. What, Snake? Is Jimmy there? He is, but put him on. Oh, okay. What? Jimmy, how do we prevent Metal Gear from launching? Well, like I said before, the railgun uses a lot of power, so... With no power, the gun is useless. Yeah. Snake, you can destroy that power plant. Yeah, but what about Metal Gears? Jeez! What is it? What's going on? Jimmy, Chris, respond! What's happening over there? I don't know. But I heard gunshots. Were they attacked? We have to help them. No, the power plant has to be destroyed first. Mr. McBride! They're about to strike. Millions of civilian American lives are at risk. Snake, your mission is to destroy Metal Gear. Don't let your emotions lead you astray. Every operation has its casualties. Snake. What's it gonna be? I'm going for the plants. Snake! But I'm not abandoning Chris and Jimmy. First the plant, then I'll find them. I don't allow casualties. Snake. God, you're soft. It's a wonder you've managed to live so long. Don't forget, preventing the nuclear strike is your first priority. Go, Snake. Take out the power plant and stop the launch. Well, three minute cutscenes. Huh. Gotta love this on a Game Boy Color game. Though, I, like I said before, it is pretty ambitious for the system because a lot of the games, well, a lot of the games that are this cutscenes were RPGs, really. Snake, destroy the power plant's main turbine. It's located on the base on the first basement floor of the plant. Well, that's our goal. Though it's actually not our goal for just this mission. I'll tell you this: we actually don't accomplish that this time. Uh, that's uh, the goal of mission, the next mission. Our mission this time is getting to it. And getting to it's a bit complicated because there are several electric floors in the area that we need to find a way around. So first we need to head down to the first basement floor anyway. Gotta love how these elevators don't need key cards at all, by the way. Because that'd be something that I'd do as a security measure. Put key card, uh, re key card readers on every elevator so they don't move without one. Mind you, knowing Snake, he'd still find a way to find one. Either way, what we have to do on this floor is pretty rudimentary. And by that, I mean we just enter this door. A 
I'm here to relieve you. Hallelujah. I thought I'd never dry, get to dry off. This is a hell of a mess. What happened? It looks like the drainage duct got choked off during that squall. We've got drainage water backing up into the plant. Hey, that doesn't sound too good. They say there's no problem with generating power itself. Not exactly, not exactly impressive in a high-tech installation controlled by a state-of-the-art computer system. Well, as long as the cells get charged, everything is doing fine. It's all yours. And oh, electricity is leaked into some of the puddles. It looks like regular water, but make sure you stay away from it. You wouldn't, wouldn't want you getting hurt. As that guard just stated, some of these puddles are electrified. You only know which ones they are by touching them. Thankfully, the electrified water doesn't do too much. Uh, the most it does is stun you for a few seconds. It does minuscule damage, but nothing really worth it. In fact, you can use it as a shortcut right there. And now we got the first of this game's... And I can't believe I have to say this in this game of all things. Air ducts. They're back. And they are still very boring. Mostly because we don't hear any music in them. Which is kind of odd, because I think there's music in them in the other ones, even if it's just atmosphere. Though note, whenever you're in the air ducts, understandably so, your radar is jammed. Still though, that's a really smooth animation. And we want to come over here to area A4. Now, you do need to come here, but... I don't know, actually, no, never mind. I was about to say you can come here later, but no, I just remember what we're getting here. So I will be doing a jump cut in a few moments uh, back to that elevator we were at earlier. Oh, and then, if you're wondering what that ammo box is right there, it is actually a new type of ammo, but I'm not going to spoil what's in it because we get that weapon this mission. And we want to enter this door. And then immediately crawl us to not wake up this guard. And over here we get key card number four. And with that, I'm gonna cut back to the elevator because now we can access more stuff since we have that. And now that we're back at the elevator, we wanna head up to the second floor, I believe. Yeah, second floor. Now, one of these days, I want a game that actually has elevator music just for the joke of it. I mean, I think it's probably been done before, but, like, the most serious thing ever. Like, have, let, it be, let it be the most serious game ever made, and then just right before the end, elevator music. Uh, actually, saying that kind of reminds me of the ending of the first Michael Bay Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Which, while I didn't like the movie as a whole, I did like that elevator scene, kind of. And now we're in this room. This room is what makes up a majority of this mission in terms of the puzzles. This entire area is a puzzle in which you have to find your way around this maze of places you need to sidle through. There is thankfully only one real way you can go. The others either lead to dead ends that are quite obvious, or there's no way you can get to them in general. Though it does get kind of annoying when you realize how slow Snake sidles, because it's painful. Now you can... Now I... Uh, the thing is with sidling in this game is that you cannot transition from corner to corner. You can only uh, transition from to another corner by being in a place you can stand normally, like that. Oh, we do need to come in here, and uh, don't do what I do here. Go to the left. Don't do this, because that gets you caught. Oh, well, thankfully there are a couple of rooms in this area that will actually... Uh, well, actually, I've seen rooms like them before that cause the guards to stop following you. Also, those are pitfalls. I've actually never fallen into a pitfall in this game, so I don't know if they're instant kill. I would assume they are based off prior context, though. Because... Yeah, instant death traps suck. Just gonna go right past you by knocking you out. I completely forgot I did that. Either way, we want to crawl into this elevator shaft. Uh, elevator, <laughs> elevator shaft. Yeah, that's clearly what this is. Uh, air duct. 
No, I've never actually seen an air duct that's big enough to fit a person. Most of the time, they're pretty tiny. Spy movies really overdo that, don't they? Huh. Oh, well. Not everything can be realistic. Mind you, that's a given, given what Metal Gear's like. Thinking about it, what is the most realistic Metal Gear? Well, either way, here we get some C4 and body armor, which reduces damage. And with that, I'm actually going to cut back to the previous area over here. But yeah, what is the most realistic Metal Gear game? Uh, one is up there. In fact, one's probably the most realistic as it is. Uh, solid one, kind of? Uh, no, no, actually, no, not even because nano machines. That's not, <laughs> that's not really a thing we can do yet. Yeah, actually, I think the most realistic games are just Metal Gear 1 and maybe Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Huh. Once you know it, the only ones that were kind of set in current times during the game's release. Because, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, especially onwards, all the things are generally set in the future, aside from the games that are set in, like, the 1950s, yet they still have giant robots. Because Metal Gear Solid 1 is set in 2005. This is set in, I think, 2003. So... Yeah, a bit of an odd timeline thing there, and yet, strangely enough, as I just stated, all the most technically advanced stuff is in the big boss games, which, well, yeah, we are, well, it's no spoilers, everyone knows that there's big boss games at this point. Also, that jump cut there was because I actually forgot where to go here, so I had to look around first. And now we want to head up here. We're finally done with this maze. We never have to come back here. And then we're in this room. This is where the big thing you need to get in this mission is in terms of items, because the body armor is completely optional. We get a Nakita missile launcher, which is a more or less remote controlled missile from the other games. And in the top right is some Nakita ammo. You're going to be using this thing a lot this mission, so get used to seeing it. But first, the Kodak call. Snake! Can you hear me? Cress, what happened back there? They took us by surprise. What about Jimmy? Is he okay? Cress! Jimmy was captured. What? I saw a chance and ran, but Jimmy... Cress. Just myself, again. Cress, don't blame yourself. But... Better that you're safe than neither of you. I'm so useless. I was supposed to have protected him. Chris. I wish I were the one taken. I can't do anything right. Chris, you were in the power plant, weren't you? What? Oh, yeah. Tell me how I get in. Sections of the floor area are electrified and can't be crossed. But there is a control panel for the floor's electrical grid. If you can take that out, you should have no problems getting through, as long as you use some weapon with a long range like the Nikita missiles. Got it. Use Nikita missiles to go after the power array. You've been in the plant once. I'd like you to give me back up with what you know. But... I could use your help. They need to keep Metal Gear in operational order, so they can't afford to kill Jimmy yet. I'll get to him before they can... before they can. Snake, I'm asking you to trust me. Okay, anything you need to know about this plant, just ask. Snake. Thank you. Sorry about me getting a bit scatterbrained during that cutscene. I'm getting distracted by something. Anyway, Nikita missiles work like this. Press B and you can then press the directional button pad to control it. However, you'll notice after a few seconds, well, not even seconds, split seconds, it speeds up. You'll need to keep that in mind for later. And, uh, by the way, you can't really do anything here. Uh, because the, the, for some reason, I guess the enemies can't cross the electrical gate here, or maybe they just don't know you're over here because of the explosion, so I have no idea what's going on. And if there are any enemies on screen once the evasion period ends, just walk left to the previous screen and back, and all of them are gone. Now, the thing is, first off... The Nikita missiles cannot be spotted by normal cameras. However, they can be spotted by the gun cameras we saw a while back. Usually, if they're in that speed-up period, they cannot be spotted. 
which is something you should really keep in mind for something I'm about to do. Because there's a lot of those power arrays. One right there. The way you immediately get to do it is go directly to the right of me and then down, but you can't, there's not enough space for you to do the speed up. So what you need to do is actually head around to the left here in Spire. And keep it from running into things and you should be good. Though, uh, you can actually crawl beneath these desks if you ever need to. But I don't do it because reasons. Also, one thing I recommend doing that I completely forget to do here is get your chaff grenades out. Because that way you can avoid these cameras. Which means you can avoid damage and avoid guards coming after you. At this point, I don't really care because I do not- I don't like this mission much, I'll be honest. But thankfully, th that guard was really stupid and he didn't think to crawl into this vent. No, these guys, thinking about it, the Metal Gear guards give up really easily in terms of, uh, following people. Because in the old games, some of them won't even follow you past a single screen. And when they do, they give up pretty quickly. It's, li it's like they think, oh, hey, what was that, Bob? Oh, it was nothing. Ah, uh, game characters. They do not act realistically at all. In fact, more often than not, uh, we treat games like a movie. Which is, you know, understandable, because movies are one of the major entertainment medias, but still, it's kind of odd. Like, I'm especially looking at anything that Quantic Dream puts out. Either way, one thing we need to do in here is get the Nikita missiles back out, and then destroy the power array in this room. You need to do this eventually, so do it now. And with that, we're gonna head back into this vent and crawl in a different direction than we couldn't before. Well, no, we could before, but I didn't go, go that way because there was nothing for us in that direction. You know, whenever I'm in quiet areas like ga in games like this, I kind of wish that the main character would start like singing a song or just humming. Because, uh, well, I'd understand not singing because, you know, it's stealth mission, but, like, can you imagine Snake just humming to himself, like, uh, let's see, what would be a good song from the 80s or 2000s at the time? 80s, 90s, 2000. Uh, like, Take On Me, randomly, when he's just crawling through the vents, which would make sense given Metal Gear Solid V. Because I'd love to see that shit. Either way, grab this Nikita missile, ammo, and then head to the bottom left of this room because that's where the next door we can go in is. Well, you can technically go in the bottom right door there too, but you don't want to because there's cameras and electrical stuff, so we need to destroy this one. This is probably the trickiest one of these things to get because if you didn't notice by now that your missile has to be in speed up to avoid gun cameras, you're gonna have a bad time. Because you have two of them in a row that you need to get past. That takes a lot of practice, I'm not going to lie. And I probably should have stayed in that room for that alert period to end, because now I have all these guards coming after me. But... I more or less say screw it. I don't really care. I'm near the end of the mission, I can get through this. So how about that remixed alert theme from Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake? I don't understand why they reused that. I mean, sure, more or less, this game is actually, in terms of mechanics, just Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake on a Game Boy Color with taking place in the solid part of the timeline. You know, this is non-canon. But it's kind of weird to think about. Why would they reuse a lot of these mechanics? Mind you, I actually, uh, I, 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 met I mentioned it, you probably figured it out by this point, but I actually really do like the top-down Metal Gears. Not as much as Solid 1 onwards, because they added so many more mechanics and it just feels more satisfying. But it's still really damn good in my eyes. Anyway, that's the electrical thing you need to destroy with that missile the last time, so make sure you get that. And grab these grenades! You're gonna need grenades coming up. So don't make so make sure you have as many as you can. And let's head north. Oh lord! A flamethrower! 
hello there. Beautiful, isn't it? I use specially blended fuel. My flame is born more purely and more fiercely than any other. Are you in Black Chamber too? I'm Pyro Bison. This is our last day in your shadow. Shadow. Yes, but you wouldn't know, would you? How much blood was shed to purchase your glory? Snake, you're no legend. You're a sinner. And you will make your reparations now. The price for your sins is your life. Every human being burns differently. Do you know that? The way the skin scorches, the fat burns, the innards char. Changes from person to person. And there you see the burdens of their sins. I wonder how you'll burn. I'll know soon enough. Burn! Okay then, Flame Hyenard. Time for the next boss, Pyro Bison. Best way to take him out is to first off use grenades. They're a bit more inaccurate, but they do the most damage out of everything we have. Alternatively, you could also use your uh, R, your 5.7 and your R5, but make sure you hit him from behind, because he has a protection from the front. And you can also use the Makita Missile, however, make sure, like before, you hit him from behind, because if he sees it coming, he'll shoot it down. This guy's attack pattern depends on where you are in relation to him, like he'll shoot straight forward, do the 90 degree thing right there, and sometimes he'll aim it straight in the sky, which will land on the floor. He's not a very hard boss, but... His flames hurt a decent chunk, so try and take as little damage as possible. Thankfully, there are points where you can completely avoid his sight, and he won't know where you are. And if you ever need more grenades, there are some located in one of the corners. This one, and I think maybe another, but I'm not sure about that. Oh, and also, because I know someone's wondering, because they probably played the game. Yes, I based that voice off of Fireman from Mega Man Powered Up, because... Why not? I'm a Mega Man fanboy, and I absolutely love fire. Well, I like fire-based characters. In fact, usually, uh, when it comes to choosing an element in video games, like if I had to pick, like, an elemental mage in an RPG or d and I, I generally try to go for fire-type spells, but if it's available, I'll also go for electricity, because for some reason I just like that shit. Oh, it's a ration in the other corner, okay. But, yeah, Pyro Bison, for being the second-to-last member of Black Chamber, nothing too bad, honestly. And I'm actually really impressed with myself being able to pull off that shot. Though I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, the hit detection with his 90 degree... Well, actually, no, it's technically 180 degree uh, fire thing like he just did there. Uh, that's surprisingly iffy on where the hitbox will end with the fire, whether or not it's blocked off by the boxes. But I don't know what I expect. It's a Game Boy Color game. And while it's more advanced than an MSX or an NES ever could be, it still has some issues. Well, I think it's about as powerful as an NES, isn't it? The one thing to keep in mind, actually, when he's doing that attack he just did there where he fires, well, fire into the air, uh, he actually does not move while doing it or when the fire is landing, I believe. So that's a prime opportunity to shoot him in the back. And that's the boss and the mission. And there's my four bad rate, my first bad rating. Oh well. You know, you look pretty good for a guy who just had his back shot a lot. Snake. I know that I, I, I know that I'm a sinner without you having to tell me. But why shadow? All right, you'll learn what your sins really are. The Black Chamber was born in the shadow of Foxhound. Go on. Seven years ago, you destroyed Metal Gear here in Outer Heaven and put Foxhound's name in the headlines. Everyone in the world knew the name. Solid Snake. And so you became the legend. But Foxhound got too famous. Since Outer Heaven, its every move was watched by intelligence organizations everywhere. Truly covert operations became impossible. So Black Chamber was created. We took over every covert ops that had been foxhounds, assassination of anti-American foreign leaders, removal of domestic civilians engaged in anti-establishment activities, intervention in strifes and civil wars that affect American interests. 
doing the dirty work in the dark, on and on in the shadow of the great legend. I never wanted to be called the legend. Liar, ask yourself why you volunteered for difficult missions. Why you're here right now. You've killed six people here already. Of course you want to be the legend. Deep inside, you want that glory. And you keep killing for it. Because it's the only thing you're good at. I've got more good news for you, my pathetic friend. There's one of us among your trusted rank. What? <laughs> Didn't you think it was strange that we knew about you coming? That we were waiting for you every step of the way? But, when you were talking to each other, you were talking to us. But, that's not possible. Yes, yeah, Snake, suspect. Suspect everything, everyone. And die without knowing. Your doubts and suffering, your hatred, is the best tribute to my fallen comrades. Two years since the trap closed. Only five of us left. The rest of Black Chamber dead at traitor's hands. Five. This is planned payback. To Foxhound. To you. To Anonymous. GLF are just pawns in our greater scheme. Viper will take care of the rest. I can die in peace. But I don't need your help. Fire. Gentle fire. It cleanses all things alike. It is the great equalizer. Of both the sinful and the innocent. That's where I'll die. In the heart of the fire. Well then. The heat. This is what I've been looking for. I'm burning. Oh god, yes. What is with people burning themselves to death in these games that I play? Colonel, I heard Snake. Don't let the enemy get to you. There's no way a spy could be among us. Wanna bet? What did you say? There are too many weird things about this mission. Including this committee. What the hell are you saying? Take you, for example. Why is the CIA biting into an army operation? And you're a little too full of advice, huh? Weasel, stop this. You too, Campbell. Aren't you retired? What the hell are you doing here? That's because... And you know something about Black Chamber that you're not telling us, am I right? Cat got your tongue. Right to remain silent, huh? Stop it! Hey, sweetheart, you're no exception. I don't care what kind of hotshot techie you are. A grad student on a classified mission? That's weird. You... Well, are you any better? What do you mean? You think I don't know? Five years ago in that war, your own brother and... What's it to you? I'm just saying that you can't be trusted. Good, it's no compliment to have your trust. Enough of this. There is no spy. This is an enemy tactic to confuse and divide us. Snake, just think about preventing that nuclear strike. Take out the power plant. Snake, you have to trust me. I'd like to. Well... That's a plot twist. Either way, with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 7, we'll hopefully be destroying this power plant. See you guys then.